The Kimberley. The Kimberley. The Kimberley. It's kind of a different name, isn't it? But it is a beautiful region of Australia that I never knew existed until about a year ago. Because I've never heard of it. You know, there are a lot of Australians who've never heard of it, but it's the northwest corner up near, well, it's on the Indian Ocean. On the Indian Ocean. It's very, very remote. Um, I suppose, based upon what we saw on the land side, you can get a land cruiser and go in and uh, real outback it, or mm. you can do like we did, <laughs> travel in complete luxury on a giant yacht with a helicopter <laughs> and explore it in a completely different way from the water side yeah, of things. It's amazing. So you know, for international travelers, uh, you fly into Sydney, and then from Sydney to Perth, which is across the country, it's like going from New York to San Francisco, yes. and then from Perth, which is in the south uh, west corner, you go up to Broome, Broome, which is in the northwest corner, and then you finally get on the ship. On the ship, and when you come home, you leave from Wyndham to Broome to Perth to Sydney. Yeah. Not it's, to mention, get back to wherever else yes. you came from. Um, uh, in Yiddish, it's called a schlep. <laughs> <laughs> and that it was, but it was a worthwhile schlep. A worthwhile schlep, absolutely. <laughs> So let's look at some pictures. Sure. We did some shooting in Sydney when we came in internationally, uh, but then when we got to Broome, uh, this was our first real uh, shooting, and it's, it's a, quite a nice town. And uh, this was sunset on the first day that we got there. and a couple of guys uh, surf fishing, and then uh, one of the local, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> one of the yeah. locals also surf fishing. I, I, I thought this was magic sand because the sand kind of held the water, mm -hmm. you know, and there are certain sands that water w rushes out and others where it kind of just gives you that little film over top of it. And it was like being on a mirror. And it just was spectacular, uh, both the sunrises and the sunsets yeah. that, that we'll be looking at. But, I well, love the fact that you put the human element into that, not to mention the bird element. <laughs> well, it just, it just balanced it out. I, I like the uh, composition a lot. And uh, this was a case of slightly desaturating uh, the tonalities uh, just because I felt that the picture worked a little better. Now, here's the opposite. Ah, that's more my liking. <laughs> this, this is what is known as a tray as a raberized image. So. <laughs> you didn't have to really work hard to raberize that because that really was pretty much the way that that was. It was a magnificent morning. Now this is the same beach as the shot we looked at a second ago, Correct. except the following morning. Actually what happened is the sun goes down over the water but comes up over the land over here as you can see. So. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is what you're seeing at sunrise, which once again lent itself perfectly, but the color, as you say, was different. I think your first image of the sunset was pretty accurate because it was at the late day, there was probably some haze, and you know, it wasn't as spectacular, but when we walked onto the beach that morning and started seeing that sun come up and start looking at that, it was just one of those, oh my gosh. It was moments. wonderful, and this was a perfect use for, I think this was the new uh, Zeiss Tuit. The Tuit lens, 12 uh, millimeter probably? The 12 millimeter, and a lot of people think that wide angle lenses are for shooting broad expanses. No, they're not. They're for immersive photography. They're, they're for creating uh, an image like this where the near-far relationships are exaggerated. Well, I think well, what I like about them is they, they they take everything and draw your eye into it as, you know, with the, the reflections in these tidal ponds here and the clouds, you know, you're just drawn right into this picture and you, I don't think you could have done that through a, a normal lens. No, no, it, it's the perspective that it gives is definitely uh, uh, rather unique. Now you have some shots from uh, around that uh, area as well. Well, I, I've only included um, a one uh, sunrise shot 
very pastel y, very subtle. You know, while this brilliant light was going on between, you know, there was this just orange. Yeah, it's lovely. Um, uh, horizon with the aqua water and the waves and just the foreground here. Now, this was done with the two at 12 mm -hmm. millimeter also. What's interesting here is when you're photographing beaches and waves, there's an infinity of shots. Yes. You can just this way and then the next wave and the way the foam moves and um, you could spend a whole day just to get the right combination. So, uh, and it's lasted a while. I was really tempted to go the old neutral density, two minute exposure, mm -hmm. you know, fuzz it out. But no, there was something about the action of the waves and the lines formed by the foam on that. Yeah, the, no, the top that, there that one just works. Worked. That works. Then we get to what may be one of the most <laughs> amazing wow. places I have ever seen. Uh, this is the Montgomery Reef. And you're out in the ocean, you're quite far from land, and what happens is uh, there are strong tidal motions. Mm -hmm. And so this reef, which when we arrived there, was, was completely submerged. submerged. Yep. And then you hang around for a few hours, and it seems like the ocean's going down because it is. It is going down. And you can't tell how, it, this is a waterfall in the middle of the ocean. And what would you say, about five, six feet high? Yeah, you know, you know a person standing yeah. there, you know, would be about that tall. Right. <laughs> Actually, we wanted to get out of the boat and the guy goes, no, no, you really don't want to do that. 